discounts. When do you use them? Why do you use them? What are they for? I have seen a ton of people on the on the uh, social media sites who are in the industry of the party rental business, and all of them are are talking about, you know, that they don't give a discount for this or they do give a discount for that. Um, and then on the flip side, they had these these elaborate fines and fees that they've come up with where if, if a unit is, is extra dirty, then there's a fine. If a unit is, is moved, then there's a fine. If there's, you know, tons of other stuff. Fines, fees, and discounts, your customers hate them. Um, except for the discounts. They all love the discounts. So here's a rule of thumb. Of, of some of the stuff that I do that uh, applies to fines, fees, and discounts. When I'm looking at a discount, what I like to do is build the discount price into the entirety of the rental. So for instance, if I'm gonna decide that teachers are gonna get a 10% discount if they book for me, I don't take that expense away from everyone that gets it and just place it on everyone who doesn't because that what's that what that does is creates a situation where you have an imbalance in your price point so if if you take the number of discounts that you're going to have every year and you build that in as an expense then what you're able to do is you're you're able to to split that amongst all the rentals, including the ones that are getting the discounts, <clears throat> and, and make a situation where um, it's, it's not hurting so bad on, on everyone. So when you're going to develop your, the price of your uh, equipment, um, you need to build that discount in. I do probably two or 3,000 discounts a year uh, dollar wise. Um, and that's over the course of, of probably a thousand, 1500 rentals. So, so let's just say, for instance, I do a thousand rentals and it's $2,000 worth of discounts over the, the, the course of all the rentals that basically comes down to $2 per rental. So I'm going to build that into the price of my rental. The, the price of my rental is going to be $2 more because of, of that discount. I'm building the price of the discount into that. You can do it other ways and you can, you can uh, you know, kind of try to rely on the fact that, you know, this discount needs to remain true. But, but in all honesty, uh, the more you fight with the discount, the more you try to create or establish some sort of prerequisite or something like that, the more you're going to create a situation where they're going to be doing everything in their power to try to gain that discount. So, um, if you ask for a discount, I give you the 10%, but I build that into the, my cost every year. So keep that in mind. Um, like I said, it, it, a lot, a whole lot of energy wasted on trying to 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 establish and enforce rules on what the discounts are going to be. I, I I think that that's just a lost opportunity. If someone feels better because they got ten percent off, then and it gets you the rental. Then, like I said, I've already built that into the cost of my my rental, so it's it's not an issue with me. Um, if you guys are fighting with customers or, or trying to catch rule breakers or whatever <laughs> you're wasting a whole lot of time on something that doesn't really matter fines on the other hand um i've seen a ton of of the operators ask or 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 show pictures of these absolutely you know terrible units that have been left at someone's house and the kids had gotten and uh you know, splashed mud up on it in the whole nine yards. They're, they're water units. They're going to get dirty again. Build the price of your fines and your fees, more so your fees, into the cost of the rental. 
And then you don't have to go back and try to fight with a customer about that. Um, now, again, a fee, a fine and a fee are going to be different because uh, <clears throat> a fine says that there's some fault. A fee says that it's just something that you're going to charge. So avoid showing people what you know what your fees are going to be because they're always going to fight with you on how to try to mitigate that and try to reduce that avoid that by just don't show it to them it, it, build it into the price and spread it out over everyone if you have a cleaning fee if it costs you fifty dollars to clean the ugliest piece that you have and it costs you an average of, of ten dollars to clean, you know, the, the the average unit in and out. You know, a half you got a guy doing it for thirty minutes or forty five minutes or whatever it takes, and it costs you ten bucks. So that's what you establish as the cost. So that's sixty bucks between the two. Fifty for one, ten for the other. Divide it in half. And now you have thirty. Now add that that price to the 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 rental. And now everyone is co-opting the price. Now you may say, well, that's not fair for the people that, that, that take care of it. It is because it's, it's a reduced price and, and, it, and, and at the same respect, I mean, it, you can't pick and choose. You can't, you know, feel your way through this and find out who's going to have it and who's not going to have it. And and get in a situation where you're fighting with a customer over this, you can lose a really good customer over something that they think is unfair. Why would you do that? Why would you risk it? Build it into the price. Build it into your price. Your fines, on the other hand, again, what I do with my fines, um, and I don't do a fine for something that, that you're going to do anyway. If you're cleaning, that's not a fine. That's a fee. There's always going to be a cleaning fee. It doesn't matter. You're going to have to, everything has to be cleaned after you use it. So, so again, you need to establish the fact that there's a difference between the two. And you need to make sure you, love, you label those so that you understand it and the case customer understands it. I use fines literally to reiterate the most important issues that I have. Okay. It's, it's, it's something that you want to drill into your customer's mind so that they understand that it is important. The, the biggest thing that comes to my mind is silly string. If you use silly string on my product, it destroys the product and I can't clean it. I can't fix it. There's nothing I can do. It's going to always look ugly. And you did that. So there is a fine. Period. Not a fee. There's a fine. You need to put that in writing in the contract and you need to also go over it verbally on them so that they understand it. Animals. If animals get on your pieces, they will do damage. I've had dogs chew up more of my inflatables because... The, the, the owner doesn't assume that a, that a dog is going to chew on it. And the first thing the dog does is go over and, and start picking apart and chewing on my equipment and causing damage. Damage that, that I can't, I can't just cover it up. I can't just say it didn't happen. You know, if, if, the, if they're ripping holes in it, they're chewing up the stairs or, you know, whatever they're doing. It's creating a situation where my pieces are no longer functional. Again, that's a fine. You need to reiterate. You need to look. If you're putting it in a backyard and you look around and there's dog toys in a dog bowl or dog poo or whatever in the backyard that would make you think there's going to be a dog around it, tell the customer. I've had customers before in the past, you know, as soon as I mention them, hey, look, you know, I, I know your dog seems friendly, but um, I've had three dogs chew up my stuff before and there's a pretty big fine if you do that. So are we sure we want to put it back here with the dog because they do chew on these things make them understand putting it in writing and putting it before them so that they understand 100 percent that they're going to be uh responsible for that now what do i do if it happens 
I mitigate it. You're not going to be able to charge someone a thousand dollars because they sprayed silly suit string on the front of your unit. You're not going to be able to do it. If you do it and, and you take it through all the steps, or even if the customer says, oh, and they pay it, guess what? They will never accept that responsibility again, period. And they're going to tell their friends and families, don't accept that responsibility again. I did it and it cost me a thousand dollars. So you add it to everyone's fee. I have a loss of replacement fee that I, that I add to every single rental. I figure out the life of the unit. I figure out the cost of the unit. I divide one into the other and that's what they pay. And honestly, to tell you the truth, it comes out to be about 17 bucks on average. So, and again, some of the pieces are bigger. Some of them are, you know, more expensive. I've gone so far as to average it out. So, um, you know, I, I can, I could figure out the, the, the cost of, of across the board of all the equipment. This is what, this is very important when you're talking about the analytics of, of your rental, why it's important to, to have a rental system that you understand that's giving you all these reports. Those things are, are not just pretty little things, it's numbers that you can look at and you can, you know, brag to your family about. You need to be analyzing your numbers. You need to be looking at your numbers and, and, and figuring out what they mean and how they can make your business better. You know, if you are able to, to spread this cost on all these, these issues, fines, fees, and discounts, then it doesn't hurt and everyone's happy and, and you're, you're, you're getting more out of it. And those customers that have a mistake or have a problem or have an issue or, or whatever, they're going to be so much more thankful for you if you're able to explain to them the situation. I, I understand the mindset of people. I understand why uh, these, these businesses do it. What I'm trying to express to you guys is, is that the fight is not worth the fight. You're going to lose more business than you're ever going to gain in, in save labor or anything like that. I'm not saying don't make your customers aware of, of the situation, but you need to do the things that are required of you to try to avoid all those risks. Again, don't put it in the backyard if they got a puppy. Um, you know, Silly string, if, if you see, you know, they're having a birthday party, tell them. Silly string, 99.9% .9 of the people out there do not understand that silly string damages vinyl. They don't understand that. They think that it's just harmless fun, and if you spray it on you, you can spray it on anything. They don't understand that silly string actually has a, a chemical reaction with the vinyl and damages it to the point to where it cannot be cleaned, it cannot be corrected if you explain that to them or better yet if you took a piece of vinyl maybe one of the pieces of patch vinyl or something like that and spray silly string on it and and create those wonderful little wormholes is what i call them on that vinyl and take that with you and when you rent the unit to someone having a birthday party show them that and show them what it does then they have that understanding Keep these things in mind, guys, and, 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 and again, don't beat yourself up. Don't beat your customers up. Rent the vinyl to them. Don't, don't make this a fight. It's not a fight. It's not. Have a good day.